The first story takes us to Canada's Torngat Mountain State Park, where an unexpected guest greeted six young hikers at their camp. Six young hikers, three boys and three girls, named Finn, Arthur, Sebastian, Alice, Chelsea, and Eve, head out to the Torngat Mountains National Park in Canada for their first hiking trip together as friends. They are all hikers who share a passion for hiking and would love to go on bizarre and wild trips to encounter and be with nature. Some locals advise them to bring essentials such as bear sprays, flare guns, and portable electric fences before heading for a hike. Due to the polar bear scare at the National Park, each bought these essentials without hesitation for their safety. Afterward, they traveled by plane to Saglik Fjord, where they would camp for three days and two nights. When the aircraft deposited the young hikers, they waved goodbye as the plane left. They decided to set up their campground as soon as possible, just a few meters from the shore. They decided to wander around the place as soon as they finished setting up their campground. They were amazed by the breathtaking landscapes, glassy waters, and fresh air that they were breathing. They all spotted a few animals across the shore, which made them realize that they were not alone and had animal companions in their camp. At night, they all planned what they wanted to do when morning came the next day. They all decided to go for a morning hike to relax within their campground in the afternoon. The following day came and the six young hikers went for their early morning hike. They hiked through the willows, hills, and shores of the place. The residents of the park, animals such as foxes and wolves, greeted them. When they stumbled upon a grassy hill, they were surprised to see a giant polar bear with its two cubs in the distance. The six hikers paused to take pictures of the bears when the mother bear, the biggest, stared at them. The girls were scared and pleaded to flee from the place, but the boys kept eye contact with the bears as they said this was a survival tactic to scare the bears off. After a few minutes of eye contact with the mother bear, the bear decided to walk away, which relieved the hikers. With that, they returned to their campground to rest and relax. They all sat around the campground and decided to tell some random stories to each other. While they were relaxing, they suddenly heard footsteps nearing their campground. Chelsea said to them that maybe it was the polar bear but Finn assured her that perhaps it was just one of the wolves or foxes that they'd encountered earlier. As soon as they were all sighing in relief, a giant polar bear surprisingly tackled Sebastian from behind while he was sitting. As quick as it could get, he was immediately being dragged by the bear by foot away from the campground. The five other hikers panicked as they grabbed their flare guns to bravely chase the polar bear and save Sebastian. The bear took Sebastian near the shore, where it bit and scratched him repeatedly. When the group reached them, Arthur shot a burst of flare gun, but the bear kept attacking Sebastian. Finn decided to go near the bear and fire his flare gun, which the bear heard and got startled. The bear immediately released Sebastian from its grip, which Arthur, Alice, Chelsea, and Eve quickly grabbed and carried him back to the campground. Sebastian survived the attack, but suffered from bite wounds and lacerations from the polar bear. The group decided to contact the park management to pick them up by plane to take Sebastian to the nearest hospital. The North Pole is a place which very few visit in their lifetime, but those who do get to visit may well see one of the most beautiful heavenly displays which the planet Earth has to offer the Aurora Borealis. But while the North may sound like a paradise, there is a devil lurking in the ice, a fast, cunning, and deadly creature that calls the pole its hunting grounds. Christopher Ennick, a geologist, had stationed himself at the North Pole, looking to study snow and sea ice. He had been at the pole for a week, and finally the northern lights had reached him allowing him to have a view of the bright sky that night. He took several photos which he would take back home when he was done. By the end of the spectacle, he returned to the small caravan which he and his colleagues had called home for the last few days. They were living in a small caravan which allowed them access to the samples they needed and kept them protected from the frigid temperatures outside. Think about it, 
How many seals do you see around this part? The ice is getting thinner, and since they are a chubby group, they aren't coming here any longer, Christopher argued over the phone with the superiors back at the office. We don't even need all of this equipment. We can tell how much of the ice is gone just by watching the animals here. The others in the caravan waited, watching as he angrily hung up. Christopher walked towards the window and stared out at the frozen tundra, seeing a white spot on the glass. He wiped it with his finger before turning back to the others. They aren't listening. They want more data, Christopher replied. What more data do they want? He shook his head and walked to the door of the caravan. If they wanted more data, he would get some. He had to go out to where they had last taken samples from but they also had to get back some results which they had sent to the lab, which was in the closest town of Longyearbyen. It was a long way. It would take two days to get the results back up there. You guys go get the data. We'll make a cumulative log for the Institute once we have it all. As they left, Christopher decided to head out to the ice by himself to get another sample which they would take home. He would keep it at a fairly stable temperature and have it taken all the way back so they would be able to carry out their own tests and see that he was right. Heading out on the ice, Christopher walked a little over a half a kilometer to the nearest spot which they had chosen to collect samples. The ice had broken apart due to global warming, and so Christopher hopped from one sheet to the next, finding a proper one to pick from. As he bent low to take out his tools, the sound of water swirling beneath him caught his attention, and he looked under the water. His first thought was that there would be a whale looking to surface for air directly beneath him. But the sound didn't come from beneath. As he listened closer, it had come from behind. A large mass of white fur leapt out of the water, throwing itself right at Christopher. The scientist had seconds to react, ducking low just as the polar bear flew above him and landed back in the water on the opposite side. Its paw had swiped him, slashing him across the shoulder before it disappeared into the water. The weight of the beast forced the water to push the ice sheet which Christopher was on backwards, sending him further away from the caravan and safety. He watched in horror as the beast began swimming towards where he stood on the ice. Reacting quickly, Christopher reached behind him for his backpack. He dropped it to the ground and began rummaging through it, searching for something. He had seen a few bears, and he knew exactly what to do if he ran into one. However, he had never experienced it and found his body shaking with all the adrenaline in his system. His arms refused to stop shaking as he tried to unzip the backpack, the polar bear getting closer to him as it swam a lot faster than he ever could. With a creature that was nearly four times his weight, he knew that if he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with this beast, he would lose. The bear's paws latched onto the ice as it began raising itself up and out of the water. Christopher turned around with his bear spray and fired it at the creature. It was a little far from him, and most of it missed. But with the nose of the beast being so sensitive, it picked up on the harsh chemicals and quickly turned around, diving back into the water. The scientist turned and grabbed his bag and made a run for it. He jumped from one ice sheet to another, spraying the bear spray behind him as he ran, just in case the creature came up and decided to attack again. He had a long way to make it back to the safety of the caravan, and with the others not home, there was no one for him to call to for help. He turned and sprayed as he ran, feeling immense pain in his shoulder where the bear had slashed him. Christopher dropped his bag as he realized that it was slowing him down and causing him to bleed faster. Dropping it, he turned to run and tripped on the ice. The bear spray was knocked out of his hand and fell into the water. Without pausing, he continued running for the caravan, going as fast as he could on the ice. But up ahead, he saw the edge of the sheet he was on rise up a little, and he fell backwards, sliding off the ice and falling into the cold waters. The scientist swam upwards quickly, suddenly out of breath, as the ice had quickly taken all of the heat out of his body. He got back on the ice and tried to continue running, but he was much slower as his clothes were soaked and heavy with water, making it hard for him to run. The bear got out of the water beside him and began rushing up to him, moving faster than Christopher could run. He screamed, taking off his clothes as he ran. The bear had gotten the bear spray washed off his nostrils as it jumped into the water, and now it was back to finish the man off.
With just a few hundred meters left, Christopher could see the caravan. The weight of the bear on his back was more than he could bear, and he felt his body being pushed forward, sending him face first to the ground. He bounced off the ice and felt the claws of the bear dig into his skin as he let out a deep, guttural cry. The bear did the same as well, almost as though it was celebrating the catch which it had just made. Christopher tried to turn around and fight, but he felt the claws cut into his flesh as he turned, with blood pouring out of his back. The creature got off of him, and Christopher began crawling away, dragging his body across the ice back to the caravan as he cried in pain. The creature circled him, almost as though it was trying to see what he was going to do. Only letting him go a few meters, the bear rose up on its hind legs and came crashing down on Christopher's neck with its front paws, breaking it instantly. The bear then feasted on his dead body, leaving nothing but scattered bits of clothing and a large blood stain on the white sheet of ice. The story happened inside a natural park in Albuquerque where a handler falls into the deadly paws of a polar bear and barely escapes. Leah is a zoo handler at a national park in Albuquerque and is permanently assigned to feed the local polar bear named Jane. Jane is kept inside a big tundra-like enclosure that imitates a polar bear habitat in the wild. The families and tourists often visit Jane, a famous animal inside the park. The enclosure has a protective fence, which Leah sometimes climbs over and places herself dangerously on the ledge to feed Jane. Leah decides to feed Jane her favorite fish, the salmon. Leah prepares a huge bucket full of Jane's salmon and carries it to the enclosure. Many people already saw Jane walk around and swim in this artificial pool. Leah was pleased to see Jane greet visitors back and show herself playing in the snow. Leah excuses herself through the crowd and tells them that she's about to feed Jane, so the visitors all grab their cameras and prepare to take pictures and videos of Leah feeding Jane. When Leah reached the protective fence, she climbed over and stood on the ledge inside the enclosure to feed Jane. She grabbed the first salmon from the bucket and waved it at Jane. As she throws the salmon at Jane, the polar bear immediately dives into the water to reach for it. When Jane got her salmon, she went back to land to eat it gently. The visitors were pleased to see Jane eating well. Leah was also pleased as she grabbed another salmon and threw it beside Jane. The polar bear grabbed it again to eat it, amusing the visitors. Leah noticed a little girl behind her on the protective fence, slightly pushing her because she was blocking the view. The little girl's father scolded her and told the girl not to push Leah as this could cause her to fall off the ledge and into the enclosure. Leah then decided to move away from the little girl's view to let her see the polar bear when she accidentally slipped into the wet part of the ledge and fell into the enclosure's pool with a bucket of salmon in her hand. All the visitors were shocked and terrified as they saw Jane, aware that Leah had fallen off in her pool. Threatened, Jane immediately dives into the pool to grab and attack Leah. But as soon as Leah fell off, she grabbed the bucket of salmon in her hand and reached for the land as quickly as possible. The visitors had already contacted the park management to rescue Leah from inside. Agitated, Jane was mad when she couldn't find Leah in the water, but found her in the land instead. Jane reached for the ground as Leah was terrified and didn't know what to do as of the moment. She grabbed on tightly to the bucket of salmon as Jane charged right toward her. As soon as Jane was about to reach her a few feet away, Leah thought of a plan and threw the bucket of salmon right in front of Jane. Unfortunately, Jane got a hold of Leah and scratched her face, which left Leah screaming in pain. Leah immediately backed away as Jane was amazed by the number of salmon scattering in front of her. When the park management arrived, they immediately rescued Leah and neutralized Jane. Leah got a big scratch on her face caused by Jane's paw, which damaged her left eye. Today's story takes us to the ice-covered waters of the Arctic Circle. The world around it is still frozen, a dark blue hue that stretches on forever. 
It's colder in the center of the ice, and a chilly breeze ruffles through the ice particles, making them dance like small fireflies. And then there's the ice fur beast, well camouflaged to its environment, that calls this place its home. It was a beautiful day, and somewhat early when Stuart Caldwell, a geographer, set out to explore in the ice lands. He was well clad in white fur, with his head covered by his white head warmer. He wore goggles over his eyes, and he flexed his fingers within the warmth of his white gloves. With a backpack hanging from one shoulder, he stepped forward into the snow and began to make his way into the ice. He didn't need much help finding where the ice was thicker than usual. He knew how to carefully navigate his way here. The wind blew against him, pushing him back and forth between the thick ice and snow. In places, the snow would fall in large clumps, while in others, it would just be a few flakes. There were no trees or bushes for shelter here, nothing but the ever-present winds. They blew so forcefully that it felt like the sun had vanished from the sky and left everything freezing. Stuart made his way across the icy ground without difficulty. Every now and then, a gust of wind could push him backwards and cause him to lose his footing, but Stuart managed just fine. His only worry was that one misstep could lead him plummeting face first onto an iceberg. Still, he kept his gaze trained ahead of him, determined to not look behind. After a short time, he found himself standing in front of a large pile of ice. This must be where the ice grows denser, he thought to himself. Stuart carefully made his way up the slippery ice, slipping several times before he reached the top. He took his bearings and scanned the landscape. A large amount of ice lay on the surface of the ocean, with little snow melt running from the edge of the ice. However, most of the water was frozen solid around the edge, creating a perfect pathway between the shoreline and the ice field. Once at the peak of the mound of ice, Stuart looked down at his surroundings. From what he could tell, he was about halfway up the mound. To the side was a cliff a small slope leading downward toward a sea of dark, jagged boulders. On the other side of the sea was a small lake filled with ice. He guessed that the lake must be the source of the water that ran through the land. There wasn't a single tree in sight. The land seemed almost empty, save for the occasional rock formation that broke up the expanse. The view really did take his breath away. If he hadn't been wearing so much heavy clothing, he might have been able to admire the sight in peace. As it stood though, Stuart was too excited to appreciate anything that he saw here, so he quickly jumped over the lip of the ice and headed downwards. On his descent, a loud cracking sound came from behind. Turning around in surprise, he saw a mountain of ice had crashed against the ice-frozen land. Stuart knew of the dangers lurking in the Arctic, which went from stepping on thin ice to running into bears. For the latter, he had a knife and a bear spray can in his bag. And for the former, his eyes traveled the plain, surveying and checking with each cautious step he took. Should anything happen, he would use that to ensure his survival in this frozen wilderness. Soon, he stopped to study the ice. There were several different kinds of glaciers that covered the surface, but all of them looked alike at first glance. This wasn't the case for these ones, though, and he soon realized why. These were very old glacier formations, which meant they hadn't been disturbed by human activity in centuries. In fact, not many people ever came here. Stuart then studied the distribution of ice along the Arctic. Some parts were thinner, while other parts were thicker. Most seemed normal, if just a little bit slippery. Still, he decided that he could walk across safely without too much difficulty. Even if something did catch him unaware, he didn't think it would pose too much danger. Or so he hoped. Finally, reaching the bottom of the slope, he made his way up to the jagged rock shelf he spotted earlier. He paused for a moment, looking down the steep drop to the other side. When he turned back to continue, however, he froze in shock. The jagged rocks were completely surrounded on all sides. Even the path to the base of the mountainside was blocked off. Great, 
he mumbled. Taking a deep breath, Stuart began his trek up the incline. The ice crunched beneath his boots, and each step made his heart beat faster. The air was frigid, and the coldness made him shiver violently. He wondered how long it would take for the cold to kill someone. When he finally made it to the ridge above the lake, Stuart stopped abruptly. The sheer cliffs above him were dotted with patches of snow, and it looked like a scene straight out of a horror movie. But it wouldn't do any good for him to rest, not when there was an entire family of polar bears waiting for him. In all his years of exploring the Arctic Ocean, never once has he seen anything quite like this. Polar bears were supposed to roam far north in winter, hibernating until spring. Yet here he was, faced with a pack of vicious creatures. What could he even hope to do? Just then, a few of the bears noticed him, and Stuart's heart raced. He knew that there was no time to wait, so he began to climb down, hoping to escape the mother bear and her cubs. As he approached the bottom, he glanced up to make sure that he'd made it. He breathed a sigh of relief upon seeing that his path was clear. However, as he moved forward, he suddenly heard a growl echo from somewhere nearby. Stuart stopped in his tracks, turning around. Was he hearing things? No, there it was again. It sounded close by, right in front of him. And then he wondered just what had he walked into. Had one of the bears followed him? He glanced up briefly, taking note of his surroundings. Another growl. It sounded closer to his right. Without thinking, Stuart dashed to the side, sliding down a sloppy pathway of ice. The noise of another snarl behind him made his heart leap into his throat. He knew this was hopeless. There was nowhere else to go. He glanced back and gasped. Standing just a couple of feet behind him, blocking his path, was the largest white bear that he'd ever seen. Its teeth were razor sharp, the tips glowing an orange glow that illuminated the dark space around it. The animal raised its head, letting out yet another warning growl that sent chills down Stuart's spine. Stuart was frozen in place, staring at the creature before him. He tensed with dread, but odd enough, he found courage as he briskly reached for his backpack and got out the knife and the bear spray. The bear charged towards him, and just as the claws came in a deadly strike, Stuart released the fury of the chemical within the bear spray. The claws knocked the bear spray can out of Stuart's hand, but he hadn't missed his target. The fumes of the bear spray had already reached the bear's nose, and now it was letting out a roar of pain which made it stagger backward. It tried to shake off the burning sensation but it couldn't seem to rid itself of the effects. Before the bear could regain its balance, Stuart used this opportunity to run. He clutched his bleeding hand, not caring about the state of the ice beneath him, as he ran for dear life. He heard more growls behind him. This didn't make Stuart stop, though. The adrenaline took him until he ran all the way back to safety. Stuart swore never to visit the Arctic again. two tourists, Ian Brown and Miles Davis, on their trip for an expedition. The two have been on many trips together as explorers and have experienced entering different environments. This time, their mission is to see polar bears up close. For them, now's the right time to begin a new trip to one of the coldest places on Earth, the polar region. They started with the world's polar bear capital, the Churchill in Canada. Churchill has the most abundant concentration of polar bears on the planet. During polar bear seasons, tourists travel to Churchill hoping to see a polar bear up close and in person. Ian and Miles are about to begin their trip by riding a tundra buggy, a tall vehicle designed to maneuver in rough terrain. The tundra buggy inside looks like the inside of a bus, and there is an open-air platform at the back where guests can stand to get a close-up look at the polar bears below. The vehicle has already driven off to its destination in the Churchill Wildlife Management Area, one of the locations in the town with the best views of polar bears roaming free. When the tundra buggy stopped at its first destination in the area, the guests, including Ian and Miles, went outside on the open-air platform. 
Two polar bears were seen just a few meters from the tundra buggy as it was preparing to travel to another location. Miles squeezed through the guests to go to the edge of the platform. Upon closer inspection, they noticed that one of the bears appeared to be a mother and cub. Ian grabbed his camera while Miles grabbed his phone to record a vlog documenting their trip. Miles stretched out his arms outside the platform to record the polar bears closely until a guest from behind accidentally tripped and pushed him, causing him to fall off the 13-foot tall tundra buggy. Luckily, he landed on a soft part of the land, mostly covered in snow. But unfortunately, the polar bears from afar noticed him and were startled by his sight. Miles suddenly stood up and noticed the polar bears slowly approaching him looking at him like a meal. One tundra buggy driver operated the vehicle to open the platform's hatch, automatically lowering a stepladder from the underside. The polar bears became increasingly hostile as they slowly walked in Miles' direction, frightening him. Ian and the other guests could do nothing but panic and wait for the hatch and ladder to open so Miles could fully climb up the platform. As soon as the hatch was open and the ladder was lowered, the mother bear started to run towards him aggressively. He quickly climbed up and told the drivers to start driving while the hatch closed. When he got to the platform, the driver immediately drove off as the polar bear tried to grab Miles from above. The mother bear growled in frustration as it saw the vehicle drive away. Miles and the other guest heaved a sigh of relief, knowing that he got saved from a potential polar bear attack. 